Hey, Heather. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Me too. Exciting. Happy Friday. Mm -hmm. Happy Friday. Hey. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Ariana. Good morning. <laughs> Your audio was lagging for a second there. And is it just you two moderating today? Mm -hmm. Should we pause the recording? Yes. Um, and I'm joined by Ariana. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Ariana Santiago. I'm the OER coordinator at the University of Houston Libraries. And we are here to do some show and tell today. So we're just going to, we're a relatively small group. I think we're just going to all stay in the same room and just uh, show off the cool things that we're doing or that we've seen or that we've learned at this conference and uh, just share with each other all the, the fun OER resources, activities, really anything, sky's the limit. So um, <laughs> I don't know if, if we wanna start maybe with fun things we've seen at the conference or if anyone has a project that they wanna share. Um, Feel free to drop links in the chat or just jump on in and talk to us about what you're doing. I can also start if people are waking up still. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to share. Um, so the coordinating board recently in the past six months, I guess, or so, we, in September of last year, uh, launched in OER repository for Texas higher education. So I'll drop the link for that in the chat, but um, it's a library of OER resources focused on resources that are, have been most used by Texas faculty. Um, it's a place where you can create OER using some of the authoring tools. It's a place where you can collaborate using groups, sort of like a social media tool. Um, and there are different hubs on there for different information. So like there's a getting started with OER hub that has all sorts of OER basics and videos and modules to go through and groups that you can participate in to talk to others. And so there's a lot of cool info on there. Uh, everything from basic OER to, you know, what to use in your English 1301 course. So it's, it's a good resource. I guess I'll go next. I'm Angie Smostrela. I'm with the NROC project based in Burleson, Texas. And we are a nonprofit. And we had one of the first OER sites, which was hippocampus.org. And it is now up to about 13 subjects and maybe around 7,000 media objects. So that may be something to put in the repository. Um, I, when I first started working in North Carolina, they put us in their learning objects repository. So that's hippocampus.org. And then the second OER site uh, that we did is edready.org. And that too is a free site. So the common assessments like ACT, SAT, uh, AccuPlacer, just basic college readiness, uh, et cetera, you can go in there and take a assessment based on any of those, also GED and TAVE, and then it'll build a personalized learning plan with all of our resources from the various grants we've received that are in there so they can study everything. So edready.org 
um, is the other OER side, and we're now also being used uh, through Texas College Bridge. Some of you all may have heard of us through that. So thanks. And thanks for putting those links in the chat. Yeah, those are neat. I'm going to have to explore. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah, I had never heard of Hippocampus. Um, I, so actually, I forgot to mention at the beginning, we also put together, oh, that link didn't show up, a Google Doc. But if you copy and paste that link, maybe I can try to get the hyperlink. Basically, it's a place to kind of if you want it, you can put your links in the chat, but you could also put them in this Google Doc or we'll try to like compile them as we go so we can kind of have this crowdsource list, you know? Oh. Yeah, uh, I'll share it with the with the general public too, or everybody who's registered for the conference. So oh. yeah, there we go. There's the link. So I popped those links in there. Feel free if you have any like comments you want to add to it about those sites that you mentioned. Again, you don't have to, we'll just we'll make sure we can kind of compile the different resources on here too. Hi everybody, I guess I will go next. Um, I am working on a little project. I am Gabby Hernandez from University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. I am the open education librarian there and I decided to try um, and attempt to keep track of all of my, my people, everybody that I'm contacting and everybody who's publishing and kind of keeping track of those differences. So I decided to try my hand at creating an Airtable database um, and making a customer relationship management system, so a CRM. And so far it's worked really well. Um, it was a little difficult. I just, I watched two webinars of like how to create a CRM and, and they have them there for free and the website itself is free. Um, and so I started and it it actually has, has worked out fairly well. Um, so I would encourage uh, to try. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna try to build it up a little bit more to not only um, just keep track of my people, but also my grants and kind of having um, how much it would, how much cost savings we're having, how much student engagement. Um, and so it all, it all can be in one place. Cause right now, and I'm sure like any of y'all who are working with this, have like a million different spreadsheets of like all the people and having, all the different links and things. Um, so I'm trying to put it all together and hopefully I'll be able to find a way to share that again and talk about it in the future. But if anybody else is working in Airtable or who has worked in Airtable and wants to meet up and share, um, I'm more than willing to have those conversations too. And so how it's really helped is I've been able to put like who's gone to each professional development session or who's um, maybe applied for a grant and I have everything separate. So that way when a faculty member reaches out to me, um, I can put their name in my air table real quick and be like, oh, they came to this session and did this, they know about it or they've already contacted us or, oh, this is a completely new person who's reaching out from, from who knows. So let me ask how they found out about us. Um, I also keep track of like, what was our first point of contact? So were they like, uh, did we find them before we were tracking this information or did they come to a PD session or were they a grant applicant? Um, so that's what we've been working on at UTRGV, but uh, you know, working together is always better. So <laughs> if anybody wants to, uh, we're here and open. I love that. I would totally be interested <laughs> in talking more about that sometime. I've also tried using Airtable. Well, I use it. It sounds like similar to how you do, but I feel like I have a very messy process where I don't have a very consistent way of using it. So that's not great. Um, but yeah, kind of keeping track of like who came to this training or when's the last time I contacted this person, that sort of thing. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of it is, is related to like marketing and or like outreach and sales like we're selling a free product but it's good to keep in touch and contact with those people and it's it's difficult when our your programs are small trying to remember all the names yeah plus i'm sure it's a lot cheaper we use salesforce as a crm and 
you know, that's expensive. So Airtable sounds like something that can be used a lot more cheaply and keep up with everything, but definitely add me to your database and I'll send you my information. Uh, UTRGV is actually an Enron member. Y'all have used us in some of our, uh, the online courses and you all have a custom oh, okay. campus size. So y'all are actually a member. We have the free OER and then we have memberships and y'all are actually a longtime member of ours. So Nice. I did. Again, I'm, I'm fairly new to UTRGV. Um, so I'm still trying to collect some of the stuff that happened pre, you know, when I was hired and collecting all those things. So we will get in contact. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thanks. I love that. I'm having dreams of a statewide database of all the OER community now. So have to think about that. <laughs> Hi, this is Deidre. I'm working on tech tips. I'm an instructional technologist. So every Tuesdays at 12 noon, I demonstrate a different tech tip. And this past time we looked at jam boards. And so I'm teaching teachers how to implement all these different uh, technologies, especially with Zoom going on. So that's something I'm working on. Very cool. And where are you at? I'm at Salt Lake Community College in Salt Lake City, Utah. Awesome. Beautiful state. Deidre also gave a really fantastic lightning talk yesterday. Oh, it was thank great. you. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. I'm Marla in Oklahoma. Um, I'm in year one of a three-year IMLS grant, um, and we are creating a kind of research toolkit to assess um, the efficacy of OER in developing lifelong learning competencies. So we wanted something, some way to measure OER that um, wasn't confined to an academic classroom so that like public libraries or um, just other places that could use OER would have a way to assess them. Um, we're also working on making a uh, OER for librarians, that's basically like research methods and um, how to do research in your library, because a lot of librarians aren't trained in doing research um, in library school. So I put um, the link to our Twitter account and our project website in the uh, Google Doc. But we're, we welcome um, collaboration and feedback input. Um, right now we've We've done a literature review and have our list of lifelong competencies, um, lifelong learning competencies that we want to measure. Um, so we'll be pushing those out on our project website and opening that up for feedback from people. I love that idea. It's exciting. That's really great. I just followed the Twitter account for the project and it, I'm scrolling down and I think it mentions that there's a presentation about it at the conference. Oh yes, yeah, I probably should have mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, my uh, graduate student and the graduate student at another institution we're working with present today at 10.30. Awesome, so people can head over there after the networking session. Yes. Deidre, I want to go back to the tech tips for a minute because that's something that our new division of digital learning has been uh, thinking about doing as a Tuesday activity, actually. <laughs> so if you have if you have any that you want to share, I would appreciate looking at them. I'm yeah, this is it's something that we think is important. Get everybody it's very important. Yeah. yeah, because people are not able to match up their learning objectives and activities using technology. And so uh, we are, I, I, Google Docs in, in, integrated inside of the LMS is a great tool that people aren't using as much.
Okay, I'm gonna jump in here real quick. I was struggling between attending this one and the troubleshooting session. And I kind of hear the reason why I chose this one <laughs> because I am one of your grant um, recipients for this year for the Texas OER, uh, the THECB coordinating. I'm working on the um, OER grant um, with University of Houston downtown. My name is Bridget Mueller. And I am the course coordinator for one of our core classes, Communication 1304. We offer 25 sections of this class every year with about 40 students in each class. And so uh, we're at University of Houston downtown. It's a um, minority majority institution and we're really focused on cost savings for our students. So we want to start with this class and bring OER into it with the eventual goal of offering our students a degree in communication studies complete OER. So we're starting with our first class, our biggest class, and we'll implement it this fall. So here's the struggle. It's a core class. So we have multiple faculty teaching this class. We want to make sure that we have some sort of standardization in the teaching. So we would like to stick with a textbook, which is what we've always done in the past. I can only find one textbook out there, just one, that covers all the items that we cover. Now, if you start searching in OERs, if you guys are like, whoa, I can do this, and I bet some of you have turned your computers and you start Googling or going to the different repositories. Yes, you will find books on public speaking. You will find books on media studies. You will find books on interpersonal communication. We want one book that does it all. So we did find one book that's really good, um, and I actually put it in the uh, group. So it's there, Kyla, you'll see it. And that's the one we're kind of going with, and I think we'll be okay with it. It's a 2016, but we're planning on implementing with different podcasts and current event articles and that sort of thing. One of the issues I'm seeing, though, is with so many faculty in the standardization of the course that we're desiring is the implemental, the instructional implemental material that instructors get used to having, as in PowerPoint slides, test banks, all of that. So I found as I've started to play in the learning modules, I found individual, oh, I could use this Quizlet as an interactive activity or different things like that. But is anybody aware of where OER is going as far as producing all the supplemental material? Or are we looking at as professors create these items, tagging them in with already created articles? I just have a lot of questions within all of that. So if anybody has any comments or suggestions, I'd really appreciate it. Hi, this is Deidre. I just completed one um, open where it's no textbook. And so we had to create all of the items. So this is a new thing that when you find information, you still have to create uh, your PowerPoint slides, your videos, everything and implement it in. That's the way I'm seeing it. But what about a repository? Sounds like a great idea. Yeah, and I guess that's the thing. Maybe we're so early in this, maybe that's what will eventually come out of all of that. We just need to figure out a better way to share all this information as we're creating it. Um, if I go to Quizlet, I can type in one of my topics and it pops a bunch of them that are already created. That's kind of what I'm thinking we need as far as supplemental material. And I don't know, Kyla, if you can speak to, is this maybe the next generation? Or are we going anywhere with this with OER development? Yeah, so a couple of things. I mean, a lot of the grants that we're giving now is is for exactly this. It's like developing the supplemental materials for courses. Um, and there are things that are out there already, certainly, but um, it's sort of putting it all together and organizing it and making it applicable for Texas and, and all of that. So we're hoping that the repository OER text helps with that a lot because you can tag particular courses. Um, you can uh, collaborate with other faculty at other institutions. And, and so we're hoping that this is a tool that can be used to sort of build. We're starting with Texas core curriculum courses um, and some workforce courses and sort of like the higher need fields and, and we'll build out from there. But that that's really what we're expecting OER techs to be doing is um, collecting these materials so that we can have full course set sort of for, for core courses, yeah. Okay, that was the goal I was wanting. I guess I just didn't realize maybe perhaps I'm the first in my discipline and uh, so I can start putting it in there and then maybe um, 
maybe we can get together some bigger support and some bigger collaboration. From other yeah, people. absolutely. You're a pioneer. It's great. All right. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me think of, um, I, I don't know if this is similar to what you're envisioning, but it makes me think of the, um, on OER Commons, there are hubs around the OpenStax books. Um, so like here's an example, right? So there's the OpenStax textbooks, but then on OER Commons, people who develop these supplementary materials kind of collect them all in one place. And I think the OER text repository could be used in, in, in the same way. Yeah, absolutely. And, then, and especially if there are things that are on OER Commons already that you think would be useful to be linked to OER text, that's very easy for us to do in sort of a bulk way. Um, so that's a, you know, shoot me an email and we can get that done easily enough. Okay, okay, thanks. I'm glad to know that that's kind of on everyone's radar and maybe a potential goal when we can maybe take this to the next level. So thank you. And then also Bridget? like institutional wise, I'm so sorry, um, you can no, we're, we're starting as well with, thinking about how we can, we, we're working on adoption grants, but now we're wanting to think about, okay, creation grants. And so that's where we're trying to focus on like giving grants to faculty who are creating ancillary materials because it's a lot smaller than trying to create a whole textbook. It's a shorter process. And so that'll also help us get comfortable with the whole publishing process and getting things licensed. So that's kind of where we're starting on institutional wise, like with that publishing part of let's focus on ancillary materials before we focus on big textbooks. So there may be other institutions that are also doing that a little bit at a time, but uh, yeah, I think it's just trying to build those resources is, is really difficult. Bridget, uh, you know, I'm your, I'm your UHD librarian, <laughs> you know, library. Hello, Pat. Yes, yeah, I hey. talked with my assigned librarian at UHD mm -hmm. And each time I email her, she just says, yeah, I can't find anything. And I'm like, well, I know, I can't either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, we yeah we're, we're, we're not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and we need to like work with you more, but from more the overall library point of view, this we're, we're trying to get in our budget an OER librarian. And, uh, you know, that, we not only see that person as like really helping, you know, having more time dedicated. Right now we have all of our librarians are working on it, <clears throat> but there's nobody that's like focused on that. So that that's one aspect of support. <clears throat> Another thing that I think UHD needs to look at in the long run is um, more coordination of like, okay, is there a, is there a platform or something that you know, we, we, UHD wants to look at as a whole to help, you know, um, make these support materials available across all different, you know, areas uh, so that you know, there's something where, you know, we're more actively exploring all of those different uh, things because we know that the, the supplemental materials, that's a big, you know, can be a big barrier for people to adopt. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's and because it's it's not just me. It's not me developing my little course that I teach. Um, right. The goal is with this core class, obviously, is having somewhat of a standardization. But then we also want to utilize the strengths that each of our individual faculty bring into it. Um, and so what we've always used as a standardization is the test things or um, the PowerPoints. You know, I don't teach from PowerPoint, but some people do. And so, right. Um, Pat, I'm just I just jotted down. I will. I'll email you directly right after spring break. Yeah. The OER I'm looking at and kind of touch base with you a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be but great. 1304, just so it's on your radar. Okay. So we have one minute left. I'm just going to do a plug for the one o'clock uh, Texas plenary because we're going to be talking about uh, a lot of things, but. Um, particularly how the coordinating board is sort of going to expand beyond just uh, course implementation and course development grants into thinking more about how to build capacity in institutions and things like OER librarians and that sort of thing. So uh, come and, and learn more about what's going on or what we're thinking about in the future. Um, yeah, and if anyone else wants to plug their session before we take off, 
feel free. <laughs> I want to hear about all the things that are going on. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. And thank you for helping us build that Google Doc. That's, that's yeah. exciting. Good resources. Thanks. And thank you, everybody. Nice. See you all. Enjoy the conference.